Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's such a joy and a privilege to uh, be ministering to you and in a sense, um, you know, come to your home to minister this morning. I'm really grateful to God and I'm uh, grateful to uh, Pastor Ashish as well for this wonderful opportunity. Uh, and uh, I hope and pray that uh, all of you are doing well. Um, you're, you're keeping yourself strong in God and growing every day uh, and, and just uh, trusting in the Lord and uh, looking forward to the mighty things that God has uh, in store for, for you uh, and you know, for, for others as well. So right at the outset, uh, um, uh, I want to begin by uh, wishing all the fathers who have tuned in today a very happy Father's Day. Uh, uh, so we, we want to tell you that we celebrate you, all the dads. Uh, we, we are so grateful for your lives, for uh, your sacrifices, your love, uh, and for the way you nurture uh, us. And we, we speak and declare God's blessings over your life. Uh, can we take a moment, church? to pray for the fathers and uh, and I know you all are at home right now um, so it would be good if, if the rest of the family can just uh, lift your hands towards uh, the father in the house and then just pray over them let's pray together Father God, we, we thank you, Lord, for the lives of, of the fathers. Father, thank you that, uh, Lord, they are the ones who, who demonstrate your person, oh God. They demonstrate your love to us. And God, this day we speak and declare a health, strength, every blessing of the cross over their lives. Lord, we, we uh, declare, God, that they will prosper uh, in all the things that they set their hands to. Uh, and Father God, we, we pray that, uh, Lord, they will enjoy intimacy with you, Oh God uh, and Father God that they will be enriched Father uh, in every uh, aspect of their lives. We thank you for the fathers in Jesus name we pray. Amen. So thank you for praying together. Uh, uh, before we get into the sermon uh, we will also look at some of the testimonies that that have come in. Uh, we have this um, mail that came in on the 4th of June uh, and this person uh, writes about the miraculous protection of one of the workers who works uh, in uh, for them uh, and this worker fell off from two stories high uh, and then she she writes that uh, he was taken for x-rays ct scan and the usual uh, checkups and uh, amazingly he was perfectly all right. Uh, and also she, she writes about uh, what she had done that morning. She had gone to meet these workers and shared the word of God with them. She uh, had uh, taught on Psalm 26 and 27 and uh, uh, you know prayed over these workers and and, and she she uh, writes what can we say except the overwhelming realization that god honors our prayers and trust and protects even those working for us that there is nothing to fear that the devil can try anything but not a hair of ours or those we pray for will be harmed that truly we are the salt that preserves those around us that we just need to trust and obey okay and uh, she continues to write about her business uh, and she uh, says that God's provision and sustenance, his favor uh, over three months during the COVID crisis uh, has been incredible over them. They did have uh, challenges, but you know, they were very um, comfortable in paying the rents and uh, uh, the salaries. Uh, not only that, they've received new projects. Uh, they they uh, have also you know, gotten salary bonuses. Uh, and this is truly the work of God. Uh, and she shares about how uh, all of this has happened beyond human wisdom uh, and, you know, marketing strategy and all of that. And she, she wrote in saying it's, it's, a, it's a work of God. And we praise and thank God for this amazing uh, testimony. Another testimony that came in on the 6th of June uh, uh, this person writes that, uh, you know, he uh, stood on God's word uh, the previous year, 2019, advanced boldly uh, and, and, you know, God did uh, mighty things in his life. Uh, and in 2020, once again, he, he continued to believe God for a promotion uh, at his workplace. And he was hoping that the promotion, uh, some news about the promotion would come in in the month of February this year uh, because God's word that 
came to us as a church body is uh, new wine, fresh oil uh, and becoming a new wine skin. So his expectation was that God would do something new uh, in his job and he kept uh, hoping in God. Uh, but all of a sudden the COVID crisis happened. It began in March uh, and uh, he resigned uh, any hope of getting a promotion. In fact, uh, he says that he saw uh, his friends losing jobs uh, and he thought that he is in a better place to just have a job, you know, forget about promotions. Mm, however, what God did in his life is uh, incredible. Uh, he, he writes in saying on the 5th of June, he got a call from his boss to tell him that he has received a promotion. Uh, and not only that, he got a, a hike in his uh, salary. It's a two-figure hike. Okay, And he says, uh, this is what happened when I... When I uh, trusted in the promises of God and I waited on God now, in such a season where uh, it's so difficult to, to keep jobs, God blessed him with a promotion uh, and not only that, uh, a great um, salary hike as well. And then he goes on to uh, write that, you know, God is our redeemer, jo Joel 2.25, where he says that, uh, you know, God can restore the years the locusts have eaten. And he, he went through a difficult uh, season where he spent a lot of time taking care of some family situation and could not dedicate time for work. Uh, but, you know, he, he talks about how uh, God is beginning to restore that time to him uh, as he has trusted in the Lord. So uh, we are grateful for these testimonies that come in. Uh, and, and it's just amazing to, to uh, see the goodness of God uh, in in the lives of each one of us. So please keep writing in uh, your testimonies. Uh, and thank you so much for this once again. Uh, right now, we will take a few moments to make our declaration that we generally do. Good morning once again, church. It's so good to see you online. Before we make our declaration, I want to read a couple of scriptures from the Bible. Uh, from I'm reading from Joel chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. It says, Proclaim this among the nations. Prepare for war. Wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Nations here are being called for war. And in the middle of all this chaos, the weak are told to declare that they are strong. Pay attention that weak were not to say that they are weak, but to say that they are strong. Is it right for someone in sickness to declare that they are healed in the name of Jesus? Absolutely. And is it right for someone to declare that if they are struggling with sin, that they are completely free in the name of Jesus? Absolutely. And is it right that in your time of need to declare that God will supply all my need? Absolutely. Declare what God's word says about you, even if your situation makes you feel exactly the opposite. Because God's word is truth. It is not fact. The facts change. The fact is Lazarus is dead. The truth is Jesus can raise him from the dead. So with that in mind, I want you to lift your Bibles high up in the air. The words will come up on the screen and you can say the declaration with me. Ready? Let's go. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I am saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, and triumphant. I am a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of his blessing to many people. I receive his word, I believe his word, and I live by his word. Christ is my master, and to him, I am in absolute surrender. I present myself as a new wineskin to receive new wine and fresh oil being poured out on me. God releases new things and a new work of his spirit in me and through me. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, we know that we, we're living in a very different time which many people have never even dreamt of. Uh, and during these times, uh, 
one of the things that matters the most is the god image that we carry uh, we understand what self image is our perspective of ourselves uh, but then the god image refers to our picture of who god is how we see god do we see him as a good god or do we see him as a god who is for us or do we see him as a god who is cruel distant and ready to get us right so god image is extremely important um, uh, and how do we develop this god image or the perspective uh, of the person of god well we think of god Uh, and his personality based on our experiences some of the things that we've been through it could be through the testimonies or the experiences of others or all the research that we've done you know we come up with this image of god and we think that is who god is but what is the real personality of god well for us to know the real personality of god we have to study his word and here is what the word of god has to tell us the nature of god is revealed in creation as you look at the things that god has created you know the wonders that he has worked uh, in psalms 19 says the heavens declare the glory of the lord now as you look at uh, the clouds and the sky moment by moment we realize that god is a god of detail God is a god of system order pattern plan design i he is a god of creativity he is a god uh, you know filled with with color and life uh, and and god uh, is is revealed in the intricacies of of the creatures that that we find around us you know so much we learn about god through creation we also learn about god through the scriptures the scriptures are inspired by god uh, and as we read the scriptures uh, one of the one of the uh, points that we have to have uh, in our minds is i want to know god uh, through reading of the scriptures and the scriptures reveal the person and the real nature of god and the third way in which we can know the person of god is to study the life of jesus Now, the bible says uh, in hebrews 1:3 that jesus is the brightness of the glory of god jesus is the the perfect image he is the perfect imprint of god the father so as we study the life of jesus we understand what the personality of god the father is and you know, we have the covenant names of god which god himself has revealed time and again to to reveal a part of his nature you know, there are so many attributes of god uh, as we think about god uh, and and what the scriptures have to say we know that god is self existent you know, nobody created him god is almighty he is omnipotent he is omniscient right so god is this incredible person who is infinite and in this covenant names he has uh, revealed some of his attributes what are these attributes you know he says i am a uh, jehovah jaira meaning i am the lord god your provider now he says i am jehovah rafa the lord god your healer he says i am jehovah shama the lord who is always with you i am jehovah shalom i am the god of your peace i am jehovah sidkenu which means i am the god of your righteousness so uh, even through the covenant names of god we uh, try to get this uh, we we begin to get this understanding of the real person who god is you know uh, this quest for the person of god uh, it's not unique to you and you and i there are are uh, people who walk closely with god who who continued in this quest of knowing more of god because god uh, is infinite uh, one of the persons that comes to my mind is moses you know, moses um, Uh, led the people of, of Israel uh, and it was a miraculous journey god did so many wonders god did so many miracles uh, through through that you know coming out of egypt and then moving towards the promised land uh, and the last thing you expect from moses uh, is for him to reach out to god and say god i want to know you because you know god could have told him that hey moses i've shown you so much of who i am through my works don't you know me already but moses had a heart cry you know? uh, and i want to read this um, 
uh, these scriptures for us from Exodus chapter 33, verses 18 and 19. Uh, it reads, And he said, Please show me your glory. Then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So when Moses asks God to reveal his glory, glory is, you know, the weighty presence of God or kabod as, uh, as the Hebrew word says. So the honor of God, uh, Moses wants to see God in that majesty. Uh, when he asks this question, God, uh, God reveals himself and, and look at this. The first thing he says is, I will make all my goodness pass before you. So combined with the glory of God, in the person of God is the goodness of God. When Moses asked God to, uh, to see the glory of God, God wanted him to see his goodness as well. So goodness, I know that word in the Hebrew uh, it it uh, means beauty, or gladness, right? The, the, the beautiful presence of God, the, the welfare that God does, and that's the goodness of God. And today, uh, among all these attributes that we could look at, uh, I have chosen to talk about the goodness of God. You know, in our God image, if we do not understand that God is a good God, um, you know, we will respond to life situations um, in different ways. We, we may not respond to life situations the way God wants us to respond. And the goodness of God uh, is, is uh, recorded through and through in scripture. God uh, is a good God. God is a good God. The Bible says that there is no evil in him. Everything about God, everything in God is good. There are several scriptures that uh, tell us that God cannot sin, God cannot lie. The promises that he makes remain. God cannot uh, deny himself. God is, is very consistent. God is truthful. God is uh, uh, you know, perfect and he is a good God. Scriptures also tell us that this good God does good works. Remember the time of creation when he created the heaven, uh, heavens and the earth, he created uh, uh, mankind, he created the creatures. Uh, he looked at everything and he said, this is good, this is good. So the works of God are always good. He never did anything which was not good. And God does good things in our lives today. Here's another thought. God's gifts are good. James chapter 1 verse 17. It says that uh, God gives perfect gifts. Uh, the gifts of the spirit, the gift of salvation. They are blessings. They are good. They are perfect. So we receive them with open hearts. God, think about this. God is good to all. God is good to the righteous. But scriptures also tell us that, you know, God is good to the sinner. He causes the sun to rise on both the righteous and the sinner. He causes the rains to fall on both the righteous and the sinner. And that's the, the, the gracious nature of God. God is so good. He is a good God. God dealt uh, so wonderfully with Israel. Israel uh, it represents rebellion. Israel represents um, complaint. Uh, Israel represents uh, a people who kept going away from God. But in the dealings uh, uh, that God had with Israel, we, we see that you know, God is a tender, loving, merciful God. Yes, he did set boundaries for them and uh, they crossed those boundaries and they faced the consequences. But God's heart for them was always redemption. God knew the destructive nature of sin and what he wanted to do was to keep them away from from sin and even at times when Israel wandered away from God you know we only hear the voice of God saying come back to me I will restore you I will strengthen you I will give you a greater glory if only you will come back to me and so that is the heart and the nature of this good God and today you know, 
all the blessings that we enjoy. You and I, we, we're at home, uh, we've heard stories uh, of people who um, have not had food during this season, we've heard stories where, where you know, so many things have happened. Uh, but as we look at our own lives uh, and we see the blessings of God, we can be grateful because the Bible tells us in Psalm 68, verse 19, that uh, you know, He's a God who daily loads us with benefits and we are enjoying the benefits of God. Uh, and He is a good God who is, is uh, giving off of His blessings, the blessings of the cross to us. And we can be grateful. We can sit and, and think about all the good and wonderful things that God has done for us. Um, in all the expressions of God's goodness, uh, one of the expressions that I want to focus in on today is the life of the Lord Jesus. The life of Jesus uh, is that perfect rep representation of the Father. Jesus uh, is that image of the Father. Uh, and as we, as we look at his life, you know, we, we will know more about the goodness of God. You know, God sent his only son, his, his uh, beloved son, to redeem you and I from the sin in, in this world. So God's best expression is in the goodness of the Lord Jesus. But think about uh, God and the nature of God. God is good and God is love. God doesn't have love. God doesn't just give love, but God is love. And he wanted to give this love to us. Uh, and that is why he sent his only son. You know, Galatians 4.4, 4, it says that Jesus was manifest uh, at the appointed time because God was waiting to send his son to redeem us. Now, we uh, are, are a people who uh, live here on this earth that is corrupted by sin. Just think of the goodness of God, that God would plan before the foundation of the earth and wait for the appointed time to send his son to redeem you and I. That is the goodness of God and that is the love of God for you and me. Now let's uh, look at what God has done a little more closely. When we read uh, about uh, God Almighty, uh, here are some words that are used to describe this God. You know, He is a great God. He is the lofty one. He uh, is, His name is holy. Right? So this is the God that we are referring to. Uh, and in creation, we know that God spoke a word and it happened. God said, let there be light. And there was light. So that is the power and authority of this almighty God that we are talking about. And not only that, you know, 1 Chronicles 29 and verse 11, uh, I want to read this for us. It says, yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power and the glory, the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. So he is a great God whose is all the power and the kingdom is his. Job 36 verse 26 says that uh, God is great and we do not know him nor can the number of his years be discovered because you know he is this being who is very difficult to grasp. He's, he's this great being who is very difficult to grasp. But as I, I shared a little earlier in Galatians 4, 4 that God um, became a man, right? Jesus was made manifest. This great God, what did he do? Here we have it, Hebrews 2 and verse 17. Therefore, in all things, he had to be made like his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make propitiation for the sins of the people. So this great God became a man. And this verse uses the word brethren, which means that he decided to experience uh, this finite life 
uh, in a sense he uh, decided to conform himself to the limitations of this physical world you know leaving behind all his glory temporarily why because he wanted to redeem you and i and that uh, is the expression of god's love for us god's goodness for us if god were not to uh, uh, not if we, if god were not to want our prosperity and our our blessing our benefit you know god would never uh, have sent his son jesus but we know that god loves us and god wants to bless us and that's the reason the lord jesus who is god became man what a great god and what a good god let's continue to look at the person of the lord jesus so jesus um as we've been saying is the exact image of the father which means that he represents the father really well there could be other things that represent the the father uh, in scripture but jesus is the best representation he is the perfect representation of the father and jesus revealed uh, the nature of the father and this is what is said about jesus you now in acts 10:38 we we read that he went about uh, doing good and what is the good that he did he went about healing people he went about delivering people he went about you know uh, uh, lifting people up from from uh, the bondages that the enemy had brought into their lives uh, and uh, in matthew 4:23 that's another passage where we see that jesus when he went about all galilee uh, he was teaching in the synagogues he was preaching the gospel of the kingdom and he was healing all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of diseases so these are the good works which jesus was doing and we know that he is the correct and the perfect representation of the father he was doing what the father wanted done here on the earth now there was once when uh, uh, philip asked uh, jesus this question show us the father no we want to see the father you know what answer jesus gave him he said philip if you have seen me you have seen the father if you've seen the words uh, the the works that i have done you've seen the works that the father uh, wants done here on the earth if you've heard the words that i have spoken you've heard the words that the father wants to release to us so jesus was telling philip as you're looking at me you're looking at the person of the father in the works of uh, goodness that i'm doing the love that i'm extending the goodness of the father is shown to you the the righteous works of the father are revealed to you and so jesus is that perfect representation of the father and i want us to take some time to look at uh, different instances in in the life of jesus when he did these good works uh, and see the heart behind these good works that he did uh, firstly you know jesus expressed forgiveness jesus expressed forgiveness uh, and this again is the heart of the father the father wanted people forgiven and that is why jesus came to forgive people i'm reminded of uh, the lady in john chapter 8 who was caught in adultery uh, and you know what jesus did jesus uh, could have joined the crowd to blame her but he said nobody threw a, a stone at you right nobody uh, is is pointing at a finger at you right now neither do i just go and sin no more he forgave a sinful woman and the paralyzed man that we read about in in matthew chapter 9 you know, the first thing that jesus says is your sins are forgiven you and those who hear him think that you know jesus is blaspheming god but to show and demonstrate his authority he also says you know rise up take up your bed and walk and the man the paralyzed man walks right uh, and and in these instances the heart of forgiveness uh, that god the father carries towards us are revealed and jesus demonstrated that forgiving heart of god you know through uh, these good works that he did jesus also demonstrated compassion towards the people you know jesus it says in matthew 9 that when he saw the crowds 
and he saw the challenges that they had he saw the problems that they came with he was moved with compassion and i have no doubts today as god looks uh, at, at different ones of us maybe we are going through uh, challenges and we are wondering does god even understand what i'm going through but here is the heart of god for us as jesus looked at the crowds i mean think about this the crowds are standing in front of him how would he even know the situation of individuals but scriptures tell us uh, in matthew 9 verses 35 to 39 that jesus was moved with compassion the other uh, healings that he did with compassion there's a time when he healed a leper lepers uh, in the times of jesus were outcasts people did not want to touch them people did not want to interact with them but here is jesus you know, filled with the holy spirit with the power of the holy spirit uh, and, and you know doing the the works of the father he goes ahead and heals a leper and that's the compassion of god that jesus demonstrated jesus healed two blind men right he healed the blind men as as they uh, called out for him and they expected healing from jesus and he also raised the the son of a widow he is the only son of that widow and when he when jesus saw this uh, this uh, fu- funeral happening and this uh, this lady in in grief over her young son the bible says that jesus was moved with compassion he could feel her pain and he did a miracle for her so jesus is revealing the nature of god in the compassion that he demonstrated and that is why he did the the healings and the miracles that he did let's go on and look at some of the the father's works that jesus did you know jesus said that in john 5:17 that that he's doing the father's works so he was doing it for uh, the person of of father god now here are all the things that jesus did you know jesus healed to demonstrate the works of the father jesus delivered even the first time uh, jesus began to preach we we are told that when he went into uh, a synagogue in, in mark chapter 1 jesus also delivered the man who had many demons in him you know uh, the demons who called themselves legion uh, and jesus performed this this work of deliverance to set that man free jesus performed many miracles uh, in john chapter 2 The first miracle that Jesus did was in a wedding. Uh, he turned water into wine. And in doing this, he demonstrated that God has power over time. Water being turned into wine in moments. Uh, and, and only God can do that. And so Jesus did this through the power of the Holy Spirit. He demonstrated uh, his glory in John chapter 2. some of the other miracles that Jesus did you know uh, Peter when when he had tried fishing all night long uh, and he didn't have any catch he throws the nets at the instruction of Jesus and he gets a great haul uh, of fishes and what is Jesus trying to demonstrate about God in this miracle you know he's saying that uh, God is above our losses God is above lost time God is uh, a, a redeemer by nature and that is why on the instructions of Jesus when Peter went ahead and and threw the nets for the second time you know, he got such a huge uh, catch of fish in Luke chapter 5 and God is also revealing that he is God who is above lack you know uh, supernaturally God provided uh, a great haul of fishes for peter uh, we also see the miracle of jesus in feeding the 5000 uh, with very little food jesus began by giving thanks and he broke the bread and and the next thing you know is that 5000 men were fed in in that crowd and he's demonstrating the heart of god for the people uh, and he's showing that god uh, is the one who has the power of multiplication god is able to multiply from a little uh, and, and all of these miracles that that uh, i've enlisted the healings that i've enlisted the deliverances that i've enlisted uh, this morning you know jesus did it in response to the needs of the people you know 
this is how god responded to people uh, showing his love and his compassion his forgiveness we've looked at the works of jesus the healings the deliverances the miracles but ultimately jesus completed the mission uh, that he came here for which was to redeem us and to grant us salvation so jesus bought our salvation the word salvation uh, is the greek word sozo and it is used uh, in in places where uh, the the term healing is is mentioned the word um, deliverance is mentioned the word forgiveness of sin is mentioned and also places where protection is mentioned so when we talk about salvation what god is uh, truly offering us is an entire package it's a package of rescue from sin sickness uh, death eternal condemnation but at the same time it is a healing that jesus has bought our deliverance our forgiveness and our protection so uh, jesus completed his mission by by buying that salvation for us and you know hebrews um, uh 2 and 11 says puts it beautifully it says uh, don't don't neglect such a great salvation so what jesus has bought for us is a great salvation uh, and you know we we can rest in the fact that god has gone before us and he has done the unthinkable what we could not do for ourselves you know what we could not purchase for ourselves through his only beloved son oh god uh, uh, has done it for us and this salvation is what jesus offers to the world today now as we look at uh, the oppression of, of satan in various ways you know sickness and uh, and uh, destruction lack uh, we can rest assured that this jesus who did the works of the father yesterday uh, is is still in line with the father's works you no know, uh, he will continue to do what the father wants him to do uh, and that's why hebrews 13:8 says jesus christ the same yesterday today and forever he forgave he healed he delivered you know, he protected uh, and he rescued us and uh, as, as we uh, c- consider this uh, in a little more depth uh, we realize that he has given us forgiveness and he's also given us healing you know it's it's as if to say these things in the same breath uh, we are very uh, comfortable to receive forgiveness from god but sometimes we struggle with the thought of you know whether god uh, whether god will heal me oh yes you know god uh, is a god of healing and just the way he forgave us he has also offered us healing and we can have both of these because jesus christ is the same yesterday today and forever in redeeming us here is the other wonderful thing that god has done for us you know god uh, uh, has accepted us through the lord jesus christ now, romans 2:4 talks about the the forbearance of god the kindness of god that that brings us to repentance so uh, god has accepted us you know he doesn't reject uh, us when when we are in our sin but he accepts us and through his work he cleanses us you know god does not want us to remain in sin but he wants us to rise up as a new creation he has done everything in his power uh, to to cut off uh, the the work of the enemy over our lives And Titus 2:14 uh, also says that he has redeemed us from ungodly ways of our ancestors he has purified us uh, so that we can have a walk which is a special walk uh, as the children of God and as the people of God so uh, Jesus bought our salvation Jesus uh, because of his sacrifice we are accepted we can overcome this world is corrupted with sin and we see the consequences of sin in many ways uh, you know the 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 earth we we see many of these things that are happening around us uh, right now this is the corruption of sin on the earth but thank god galatians 3:13 says that jesus uh, has redeemed us from the curse of the law we can overcome anything which is of the curse of the law 
whether it be sickness, whether it be lack, whether it be, uh, you know, negative emotions that we're going through, we can overcome you know, the destruction uh, that, that we see in the world, that, that can be overcome uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, Jesus through the cross has given us the, the power to overcome. Jesus has also restored and renewed our lives. Romans 8.28 uh, is that oft-repeated scripture that comes to mind where it says, all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. Uh, and today, uh, church, we can make that confession in any given circumstance that you and I are in uh, and say, hey, this is the goodness of God. He makes all things uh, good in my life because I love him. And this God, his goodness is in saving us to the uttermost. Hebrews 7.25 says that God saves us to the uttermost. And in this, he demonstrates his love for us. You know, the, the extent of his, his saving grace is incredible. Uh, and, and, you know, he is just waiting for those who respond to him to save them. And he is the one who brought us abundant life. So this morning, the word that I want us to have resonating in our hearts is that God is for us. God is for us. Uh, in what he has done through the Lord Jesus Christ, he has clearly shown that he is a God who loves us and who has overcome evil on our behalf. And today, he wants us to be overcomers. Uh, and, and so we can be clear and very, very confident that God is a good God and that God is for us. Now, just uh, one, one um, thing that I, I want to uh, talk about before we take some time uh, worshipping the Lord again uh, is this question of what when bad things happen to us. You know, we're saying that God is such a good God. But what about bad things that happen and bad things that happen to good people? Well, Jesus did say in John 16, 33, that in this world, you will have tribulation just by virtue of the fact that we live here on the earth. We are not exempt to problems. We are not exempt to uh, challenges that, that we face. But the truth is that in Christ Jesus, we have now become overcomers. We can exercise our authority. We, we can demonstrate the power of God and we can rise above any and every situation. We do face challenges. We do face problems, but we overcome. Uh, here are a few more things uh, that, that we can uh, consider. Uh, this world has problems because of sin. Right? Sin is uh, extremely destructive and the world has been corrupted. Uh, Romans 8.21 uh, says this. And when did this happen? It happened right at the beginning uh, in the Garden of Eden when the first man and the first woman uh, gave entry to sin into the world. And then uh, let's not forget there is an enemy, uh, Satan, that the Bible talks about who uh, is, is actively engaged in destruction. You know, he goes about... Um, feverishly trying to, to create trouble for people uh, till such a time that God has appointed him. So the destructions that you see coming uh, are from that source. Uh, and of course, you know, there, there are times when uh, individually we we don't honor the borders that God has given us, the boundaries that he has given us in his word, uh, and we end up trespassing those boundaries. Uh, and then we face consequences. We could also be facing consequences because of uh, others' disobedience. But, you know, when we come in repentance before the Lord, God is faithful to, to forgive us uh, and cleanse us from our sin also. Uh, then again, you know, there is correction that comes from God. This correction, you know, we, we look at it as a, as a nurturing correction because the correction that God brings is a correction which will propel us forward. It is for our good and it is for our benefit. It's not for our destruction. So uh, having these things in our mind, you know, once again, I, I want to re reiterate uh, that statement that I made that God is for us. God has good 
plans for us. God wants to cause us to prosper. He doesn't want to harm us. No, God is good all the time. And today, you and I can put our trust in this same God. You know, He's an unchanging God. He never changes. When good things are happening, God is good. Even when bad things are happening, the Bible says that in His nature, God is good. Now let's take a few moments to worship the Lord and we'll come back after that. Focus on the Lord uh, Church. You know, here's uh, what 
Romans 8.32 says, He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Uh, diff different ones of us, we may be going through different uh, circumstances and situations right now, uh, but this one thing we can be confident about, you know, God, uh, his heart towards us is good. He who gave his only beloved son, will he not uh, give us all other things that we need uh, for our lives? Uh, and so let our confession be uh, like that of David. In uh, Psalm 9, 10, uh, David says, For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Uh, and this morning, uh, can we just look to God with, with that kind of a confidence in Him? In, in our intimacy with the Lord, we know that He's a God who will not forsake those who seek Him. So we say that, we believe it, we say that, uh, and, and we move forward with that faith. In even Job, you know, he, he said that, I know my Redeemer lives. So these revelations that, that people had in their difficult times uh, about God and the nature of God, the good nature of God uh, was, was what helped them overcome. And this morning, church, can we be those people who begin to confess these same declarations and say, I know my God is for me. I know my Redeemer lives. I know that he will not uh, forsake those who seek him. He's already blessed me through the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and, and church, uh, let's, let's develop uh, uh, greater intimacy with the Lord, take more time and just worship Him, honor Him and thank Him uh, for His goodness and, uh, you know, His heart for us. Uh, and, and also remember that every benefit which we have received, you know, we, we may look at our lives and, and think that we are the ones who have done everything well and uh, we, we are the ones who have achieved big things in our lives. Uh, but this is what God's word says, that he is the one who has made us, not we ourselves. Uh, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So in cooperation with him, you know, he, he uh, leads us into victory. He leads us into profit. But we do glorify and worship and thank God because he's the one who is going before us and, and lifting us up. So uh, church, let's recognize the goodness of God. Let's confess the goodness of God. Let's keep drawing closer to the Lord uh, so that this revelation of his goodness keeps increasing in this particular season that you and I are going through. Uh, and uh, I just want to take some time to declare the, the peace of God over you. you know, the Bible says um, that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Uh, and, and the word Shalom uh, in the Word of God is a whole. It, it's a complete prosperity of, of both the inner person and the outward man. And so I speak that Peace, shalom over you uh, in the name of Jesus. And uh, in everything that we may be going through today, uh, I just uh, declare by faith uh, that God's provision will find you. Uh, I, I declare by faith that uh, God's healing uh, is being made manifest in, in bodies right now. Uh, I declare by faith that uh, we are experiencing the deliverance of God uh, in oppressive circumstances. God, we thank you, Lord, that you through the cross, Father God, bearing the, the shame, the pain of the cross, Lord, you have uh, uh, given us in exchange, Lord, every covenant blessings. And Lord, as your people, thank you that, Lord, uh, we can have those blessings, O oh God. And Father, even this morning, I just want to praise you and thank you for answers to prayer, for, uh, un uh, Lord, the fulfillment of promises, uh, and Lord, every kind of blessing, Lord, which is coming into people's lives. And God, uh, I pray that those of us who have a, a spirit of heaviness, God, that it be lifted off of us in Jesus' name, because you are a good God. And Lord, even as we focus on you and your goodness, Lord, I pray that every dark cloud will be dusted off. And God, let, let, let your light shine bright, O oh God. Father God, uh, this morning I thank you for, for creative ideas, Father, that you're releasing into people's lives. And God, thank you uh, for breakthroughs that you're releasing into people's lives. And God, uh, we just want to rejoice in all that you're doing, Lord. Father, may your name be glorified. 
We worship you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, church, we just want to thank you for uh, joining in this online service uh, this morning and um, I really uh, hope and pray that you were blessed uh, and, uh, you know, continue to, to hold on to God, continue to trust in God, be very confident uh, in the goodness of God towards us. Uh, and right now, I want to speak God's benediction over us. May the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of the Father, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forever. And everyone said, Amen. God bless you.